Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today in this session. So today in this session, we are going to begin this important concept in C programming, which is called recursion. So what is recursion? Recursion is simply for something to be calling itself continuously until a certain condition is met. So in this case of C programming, we are dealing with recursions in cases where functions are involved. So what is a recursive function? When is a function said to be a recursive function? A recursive function is a type of function that calls itself within. Do you get it? So if you write the function, code everything you want to code within the function, then inside that function, the function will call itself again. We are going to see that. I'm just trying to give you an insight of what a recursion is. So that's simply recursion. So when you ask what a recursion is, what a recursive function is, is what a recursive function is, it is simply a function that calls itself within the same function. Okay, so before we proceed, I would like to show you something here. I have my underscore put car. Let me open it for you. I have my put car. Did you see that I have it here? So you need to copy it from this link here. You need to go to this link and copy put car. Where is it? Yeah, and paste it here. Create the file. And when I open my main.h as well, this is my header file. This header file is that of the project here, the task we will be solving in this project. So all the prototypes are here so that I will not be switching from the main file all the time to and from the main file all the time. Okay, so that's why I created this. So before we continue, let me quickly pass this information. For those interested in our C mentorship program, the course application for the seventh batch is currently open. So kindly go to b12learn.com.ng, which is our newly launched learning management system, and then go to courses. Under courses, you'll be able to see ALX Complete C Programming course. So because I'm already logged in, that's why I'm seeing continue learning here. In your own case, you will see start learning. Okay, so if I click on continue learning now, so as you can see, I have the project here. These are the first ones created, how to clear repositories, Hello world, how to install Betty, all this. These are all the ALX project as you can see here. We have them on this website. Okay, so for instance, if I want to access the small functions, more nested loops, I will just click on this. And as you can see, all the materials are here. Okay, so here as well, if I want to access functions and nested loops, all the course materials are here. So if you're really interested in taking part in this mentorship program, kindly message me using the WhatsApp link in the description of this video. And then I will share a coupon code which will give you a 30% discount on this course. Believe me, this course is very affordable, okay? Also, if you have a course that you want to sell on this website, you can register as an instructor. Simply come here and then you can click on instructor registration. You can register as an instructor because I've already registered. That's why you're saying you are not registered as an instructor. In your own case, you'll see a registration form which you need to fill. Okay, so after filling the registration form and after uploading your course, the course will be reviewed. And once everything is fine, we are going to make it available for others to have access to. Okay, so if there is any inquiry you want about being an instructor or enrolling in the C programming course, kindly message me, like I said, using the WhatsApp link in the description of this video. And I will answer your question and also I will share the coupon code that you need to get 30% discount on our mentorship program. So thank you very much and let's continue. Alright, so what we're going to do now is before we proceed, I would like to explain a simple concept for you before we begin solving examples on this. So I will not take time explaining everything about recursion, but believe me, as we're solving the problem, I'll be explaining and that way you'll be understanding what recursion is. Okay, so please just stick around. Okay, so like I said, I want to explain a concept. Let me create a file. Let me call it test.c. So if I say hash include, sorry, here I need to say stdio.h. I'm including that of the standard functions, right? So here if I say main and then void. All right, so one thing I want to explain to you is simply pointer arithmetic. This is what we're going to need in solving our problems on recursion. Or yeah, one of the things we're going to need to solve our problems on recursion. So assuming I have this array of characters, let me call it A, and let's say it takes in five characters. So if I say it's equals to, sorry, not this way. If I say, how do we declare arrays? 
initialize arrays if i say a right it takes in the characters a b right c and then d i think five right no all right so and e here all right so now i have this character here this array here right so what if i say printf here i want to print a set of string from this array if i should say percentage s here backward slash n which will take me to a new line what is the name of the array the name of the array is a right so if i should say a what do you think will happen if i should print this just a what do you think will happen let's see what will happen here let's see so if i should say gcc test dot c dash o t all right compile so let's run it so we got what a b c d e printed with a random character at the end so what i'm trying to explain to you is simply this forget about the the a part here i wrote here what i want to explain to you is if i say a plus one now what do you think this function is going to print this function is going to print from the first index what character is in the first index here we have b a is in what index zero index one index two three four this is pointer arithmetic i'm sure if you've gone through the materials on pointers that on the internet you must be able to understand what this pointer arithmetic is so this is going to print from this point exactly index one up to the end of the string so let's see the output if i should clear this compile so did you see that i got from that point up to the end of the string i don't know why i'm having this extra character at the end all right so as you can see we got from b up to the end of the string what if i want to print from this index here this is what index 3 right index 3 no zero one two yeah index three so i'll just put what three here so you are just telling your printf where to start printing from so you are telling it that go to e and in index three of e begin printing from that point up to the end of the string so here if i should say wq compile on the compile file so did you see that i got d e at the end so don't mind about that last character i just want to explain to you what this is Okay, so this is simply pointer arithmetic. So this is what we are going to need to what? To solve these problems or recursion. Do you get it? All right, so for this case, for the case of this example, I'm not going to remove it now because I think we are going to refer to it before we begin, before we finish solving task zero of this project. So let's see the tasks. So this says we should write a function that print a string followed by a new line. So we all know how to print string using pointers. We use put car, we use loop to loop over s and then for each iteration we use put car to print the character at that index but in this case we cannot use loops you cannot use loop to solve recursive problems do you get it you cannot use loops to solve recursive problem most of the problems that can be solved recursively can be solved using loops as well and also most of the problems that can be solved using loops can be solved recursively but it's just that there are cases that using recursion is more easier than using loops. Do you get it? So, like I said, as we're moving on, I'll be explaining all the necessary concepts you need to understand about recursion. Okay? So now let's begin solving task one. Sorry, task zero of this project. So this is it. All right. So VI paste. All right. So here, as you can see, I've already, I already have my Betty documented. So here, we'll begin writing the function. So what do we need to do first? What do we need to do first? Firstly, we need to set a condition because we are not going to print up to determinating null byte, right? So we need to set a condition for this determinating null byte, isn't it? So that it will not exceed determinating null byte, right? So I need to say if what? If asterisk s, right? is not equals to the terminating null byte right so i've set a condition for this this will keep my recursion running right so inside this if statement here i need to what i need to print the character s so all i'm going to do is i'll just say put car as far as s is not determinating null byte. this is the referencing sorry i'm using a capital s here small case s yeah so this is the referencing right so as far as the character at that particular position of s is not equals to determinating null byte right as far as it is not equals to determinating null byte then it means it is a character right so and we want to print it isn't it so i will just say asterisk s so now this will print that exact character 
right so after printing this you all know that this asterisk s will only target the first character isn't it assuming i have something like this let me just come here and say a let's just say let me create a pointer asterisk a let me call it so let's say happy for instance so if i say asterisk a now if i'm the referencing asterisk a it is going to target the first character here right so after targeting the first character here what next again we have what a p p y to check right so what i'm trying to explain here is after printing the first character now we have the first character printed isn't it so we need to pass the remaining string to the function again this function again we need to pass the remaining string which is this function sorry to this function so that we will get the asterisk s again printed let me open this on, on the paint here. What I'm trying to say is, assuming, assuming I have this character, set of string, let's say happy, right? Happy. Isn't it? So if I say asterisk s, here, asterisk s, it is going to target this h here, the first h here, right? So now my asterisk s is h. So, after printing the asterisk s, I still have this remaining string to print. Isn't it? So, I will pass this remaining string to my function again. Now, what is the first character in, in this string? A is the first character. So, since I'm passing this remaining character to my function again, it is going to print asterisk s again, which in this case, it is what? A. Since we are done with this part already in the first call to the function. So, it will now print A here. So, now we are done with this. So we need to pass this remaining string again to the function again. So what is asterisk s in this case? This is asterisk s, the first character here. So that we will have p printed. So this is gone now. So the remaining string will be passed to the function again. And asterisk s will be printed, which is what? This. p will now be printed. This will now pass, be passed to the function. What is asterisk s? y. So y will be printed. So this is gone. So it will check for the terminating number. This condition is true, right? So it will not run anything in this case. Do you get it? So and one thing I want to explain to you is, which I've already did, how can you move now? If I have this, let me just delete this part. If I have the same H, A, P, P, Y. If I have this H printed already, how can I pass this remaining character? To my function so it's going to be what s plus one isn't it you pass s plus one i just explained s plus one s plus one means it's going to begin from what index one and this is our index one a here we have already dealt with index zero so it's going to pass from index one up to the end inside your string so if the function is called again and put car print index um, asterisk s here and this a is gone this remaining part will be passed to the function right so this is what our new s index one uh, sorry s plus one this ppy right because initially this is index zero right and we've printed it so and we are saying we are now passing s plus one to the function again so this is what index one of the function so it will pass this string to the function again so after passing to the function and printing asterisk s which is this so now we need to pass s plus one again what is s plus one in this case this is index zero now so s plus one is going to begin from here so it will print what sorry it will pass p p sorry p y to the end of the string to the function again and then that way this string will be printed again this character and then when it's gone it's going to pass s plus one again which is this y character and after printing it it will check the null byte and that condition will be true because we've reached the null byte so it will not get this printed so i'm explaining this to you because this is a recursive call okay so this is a recursive call so here, all I need to add here is I simply need to call the function again. This is the function. I need to call it by its name. So I'll just call the function and pass it. So the function, when you look at this, the function takes in what? A pointer to a string, to a character. So here, I've printed what the first character in my S. So now I need to pass the remaining character so that when the function is being called again, the function will print the, the first character at the newly passed set of string. So here, I'll just say S plus one so this is how i will pass the from index one of s up to the end of the string inside my function again so this function will be called again so and when the function is called it checks for this condition what is at s um at asterisk s 
that's the first character there what is it is it a no byte no if it is not a no byte it will print that character after printing the character it will call the function again and pass in the remaining characters again if there are there, there are characters that remain as well it will pass it to the function and the function will come again and check for the condition if it is true it is going to print this and then the remaining characters will be passed again i don't know if you understand this this is simply recursion so as you can see here we are calling the function again calling the function again and passing it what set of string if you print the first one we call the function and pass the remaining string after printing the first character in the remaining string that was passed to the function then it will pass the remaining characters to the function again and it goes all over all over until this condition becomes false do you get it so after printing this the else part i will just say here i'll just print a new line so i just say put car here backward slash n that's all so i'm expecting this to print string okay i'm expecting this to print a string i saw you can see here it says followed by a new line so let's see this before that let me remove the file i created which is the test file which is not part of this program or part of this question here so let's run betty yeah betty is happy so let me create the test file and let's test this function all right, so let me copy this, copy and paste. All right, so hash I. All right, so let's compile the program. Compile and paste. Good, so let's run the compiled file. So did you see that? We got puts with recursion printed. Puts with recursion printed. So we are able to print the characters one by one. This is what happened. This is asterisk s, right? It checks. Is it the terminating or byte? No. It prints it. After printing it, it passed s plus one to the set of the to the to the function again. And in this string, what is s plus one? It is going to start from index one. I've explained that. So it means that after passing this to the function, what is now the first character? U is the first character. When the function takes in this set of string again, this is the what this is the first character u. So it print asterisk s which is u and then it passes the remain to the function again that's how it will keep doing until it reaches the terminating number i believe this is clear so don't forget add commit and push to a github and then you can run your checks so now we're going to stop the video here in the next video we are going to continue from task one of this project so thank you very much to meet in our next session